Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dirtafest episode one. Let's kick this thing off. started off the show with breaking a string but uh anyway that was a great uh great kickoff to the fest number one it wouldn't be a, a live stream if something didn't go wrong well welcome everybody thank you for tuning in um i may have to uh figure out a uh... <laughs> All right, thank you tim it is a great start right <laughs> G string, right off the bat. These are new strings, too. I just play too hard. I play too hard. Well, everybody, it's here. It is Dirtafest, episode number one. Um, and we've got some very special guests for you today. We have uh, Jeffrey Brower, whose idea Dirtafest was in the first place. Um, I'm all tangled up with my guitar strap. Ugh. It's going well, going well. Um, Jeffrey Brower, who uh, he, he 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 was the one who came up with the concept for um, Dirt of Fest, and we've got this music community on Twitter, and it's um, it's been pretty positive. I think everybody's uh, initial thought about social media is negative, and I know like that was mine, and then um, I kind of discovered the music community on Twitter pretty late. I wish I would have done it earlier because <laughs> I felt like I couldn't get anybody to listen to my music. And I met all these cool people and a lot of them are on here. Tim McIntyre, Becky Doolin, uh, Eric Linden, um, Yvonne Love uh, from Bottle Cap Mountain watching her buddy Stuart today. So we're gonna have Jeffrey come on. We're gonna talk a little bit with him. And then uh, Stuart Gersman of uh, Bottle Cap Mountain. So a band I never would have heard about if it wasn't for this Twitter music community. Um, and I'm super excited to talk with him. Uh, he's talked me through a couple gear purchases that I've had. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, so let's get a couple housekeeping things out of the way. Uh, first of all, as always, anything Matt Durda does is sponsored by Old Forester Bourbon. They don't pay me. I'm not a paid sponsorship, but it wouldn't be possible without them. So cheers, everybody. And uh, 
Uh, do you live inside your own heart, Mentor? I do, Harvey. Thank you for that. Harvey, it's great to see you here. I don't know if you saw, I broke a string. I'm not sure if I'll be able to play your request, but we'll see what we can do. Um, and I uh, wanna, wanna say a couple other things. So I talked about how this whole concept was born out of our Twitter community, but, um, and I hate, I hate when people do this, uh, but I'm gonna do it now because my goal is I want Dirtafest to be a live festival one day. I want to. I want Bottle Cap Mountain, Matt Dirt and the High Watts, and uh, Elephants and Stars, Trailer Hawk, Eric Linden, the Negatrons, all of us to play live together. So if we can ramp up, you know, these Dirta Fest uh, videos, and so you know, get the word out, share it, like and subscribe. I hate that, but you know, if we can get some traction behind this, maybe we can eventually get to a point where we can do this thing live, which is what I think we all want. Um, so uh, yeah, and I just wanna also give one more shout out to um, somebody who I don't think is gonna be able to join us tonight um, due to a tragedy, Steve Johnson. Some of you may know him as uh, I Love the Mats. Um, probably my first real fan ever. So cheers to you, buddy. Good luck with everything. Uh, know it's rough but we'll see you soon um and with that being said i am going to bring on somebody who is very important to our music community here uh on the twitterverse mr jeffrey brower here he is ladies and gentlemen jeffrey brower Talk. hello <laughs> He's got his Dirtafest shirt on. Can you hear me, Jeffrey? I can hear you. I, I can, but I'm getting. I'm. I'm getting. It is is something replaying on your side because I'm hearing two things at once. Uh no, I don't hear it right now. There's nothing playing twice on your side. No, not on my side. I hear you perfectly. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me though? The sound is perfect. Just oh. It sounds okay online? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. You sound good. Okay, sorry. Good. I'm getting Is this bad? Oh yeah, good point. Eric said you might have Twitter and do you have do you have another browser open? Uh, yeah. No, it's rough, but We'll see you soon. Um, and with that being said, I am going to bring on somebody oh. who is very important. Oh, Jeff, to it's because you have YouTube, YouTube open too. Uh, yeah. It's working yeah. now. Yes, hold on. Hang on. Yeah. Sorry. Got I'm gonna it. Close, I'm going to close the YouTube. Go there you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got it. Hey, you sorry. sound good. You sound good, I have, man. I have great right hair for a reason, okay? <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on. Let me let me do this professionally. Uh, sorry, sorry. Anyway, no, Matt, I have so many th things to talk to you about, and um, and um, and away from my earplugs. But anyway, um, so um, so let's put waste this lie that you can't make friends on on social media because uh, uh we made friends on social media, and um. And I think we got to thank High on Stress for that. Um, yep. You know, yeah. I woke up one morning and they um, they were following me. I said, "Oh, these people have good taste," because I I guess I made some replacements uh, tweets, and then uh, then I listened to their last album, which is freaking amazing, and and I think that's how you and I became friends. And then we started following each other, and you know, we I gave a whole shout out on a video today. We have a great music community. Um, um, that I think is just amazing. But anyway, I want to talk about your music because um, you were nice enough to send me a super CD so I don't have to learn how to be like you young kids and stream and all that <laughs> stuff. So so I, I, I posted earlier the influences, okay? And so the first one I came up with was 
it's like a tougher old 97s, okay? Yeah. So, um, I, I, so real, that was the first one I came that. up with. And then at the end yeah. of the CD. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, you, um, it? You, you know, Betsy Lane is for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Betsy Lane and is definitely an old 97s influence. And then I got a lot of Southern Gothic out of it, which is funny because for some reason I thought you were from North Carolina and you're like, no, dude, I'm from, hang on. You're from uh, Illinois. <laughs> I'm not real yeah. good with the flyover states. I'm an East Coast guy. Anyway, no, you know I love you. But anyway, so I got a Southern Gothic feel off of it. And I really loved it. And, um, and so I got a few questions for you. So obviously you play the harmonica. That was one of my questions. Great harmonica. Um, do, do you ever have a fiddle on any of your songs? Uh, I want to. I've been looking for a fiddle player. Fiddle players are hard to come by. I played with, I got to play with one one time um, at a songwriter showcase they used to do at the Cubby Bear in Chicago. And it was like, yeah, this is what's missing from my music. So if there's any fiddle players out there, if anybody knows any fiddle players out there. Man, fuck a fiddle player. Yeah, no, I, I've played with one I, before and it's a lot of fun. It's like having a lead yeah. guitarist without having a lead guitarist. Um, all right, so I I'm going to... I'd love it. I'm going to go on real quick because I did. I studied your your the songs you, you sent me. Like I, I was about to write an article for Rolling Stone. So like, like um, you listed a couple of them. Like we talking like, you know, Lonesome Depth of Hattie Carroll or Emmett Till or Down by the River. What... Inform in an old punk rocker like me. What's a murder ballad? Okay, yeah. So this is funny because it's a good story about um, what, how Betsy Lane actually came to be. Was <coughs> um, on that self isolation record I do um, in the pines, and as a kid in high school playing the guitar, you know, into punk rock. Like, of course, I was really into Nirvana, and Nirvana did. Where Did You Sleep Last Night, Lead Belly's version, mm -hmm. and I was playing it, and my okay. grandmother knew the song. And I ah. was like, whoa, you actually know this. And that kick-started a relationship between me and her and folk music. And she would tell me about, like, you know, they had songs that, when she was a kid, that sounded like lullabies, and they were all about murder, like Pretty Polly, <laughs> Butcher Boy, um, yeah. In the Pines. And some of them, like a lot of them for like, if they were played on like um, the Grand Ole Opry or something, the, they'd have, they'd take out the murder stuff. But um, I, my grandmother and I started talking about that murder ballads and I got super interested in them. So um, when I started getting into the old 97s and Uncle Tupelo, it was kind of like the two worlds collided. Like, oh, this like alternative rock that I'm playing guitar on and the Southern music the, and the bluegrass that I grew up with and the storytelling, it came together. And so I came up with the music for Betsy Lane and I had the chorus that I knew I wanted it to be something about Betsy Lane. And that's where my grandmother's from, Betsy Lane, Kentucky. And I was gotcha. like, let's do a murder ballad, set modern day murder sure. ballad set in Betsy Lane, Kentucky. So technically you're a Southerner and I'm just a damn Yankee. All right. I'm going to give you a few more compliments. <laughs> all right. And then I want you to get back playing the guitar and hopefully I don't have technical difficulties because you all know I'm a freaking technological idiot. All right. Um, Evil Knievel. Great rock song. Okay. Most people don't know uh, that song. Tracks so that's from my, that's from my previous band, The Disappointments. We wrote a song called Evil. You did Evil. mention that on the, on the liner notes. I got great liner notes. Yeah. Dude, this thing, I'm going to cherish it. I, my wife was like, I why are you sleeping with a CD last night? I'm like, this is my favorite CD. I'm sleeping with it, right? So, you know. Yeah, okay, so I, 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 wrote that, I wrote that I wrote that. song after I had hung out with the Knievel family in Butte, Montana at Evil Knievel Days. Oh, well, now you're just showing off. <laughs> Nate, let me I, just name drop some more. I used to jump my BMX 12 feet in the air, and and uh, that's why I don't walk so good right now. But anyway, um, all right, uh, your cover of Tracks of My Tears, that's when I finally started getting the replacements vibe. 
Yeah. Okay. Cause I was waiting for like a stonesy version and, and you just kind of were like, yeah, let's do this. And then great solo at the end. Right. And then, um, uh, do you want to be my sin? Total cramps ish. I mean, like rocking and reeling Auckland, New Zealand. Awesome. Right. And then, um, um, and then I like the studio version of, damn it, of, um, I like the studio version with the crunch. Number 17, that you sent me. Very maddish. 18 was very maddish. And 19 was very, very perfect way to end an album. And so anyway, so. Um, I don't remember what they are now. Numbers. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm the biggest music fan in the world and you're one of my biggest music friends. And, um, so I just wanted to pump you up so you can play us some more music. And, um, uh, this is your show. So, I mean, I should probably shut Thank up. You. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Well, um, I, I think you're we'll welcome. Get, I, I think we'll get to the guy everybody's here to see anyway. So I, um, uh, I broke a string on my guitar, so I'm all out of songs. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have somebody who can play some songs for us. Uh, let's welcome from Bottle Cap Mountain, one of the greatest bands in the entire world, Stuart Gersman. Everybody, <laughs> welcome to the hello. stage. Hello, hello. You're too Good kind. Good to see you. Good to see Good to you, see my you. man. Good to see you. I'm glad to be here. You're uh, you're way too nice. That's like one of the most ridiculous things anybody's ever said on the internet. <laughs> but uh, well, but I appreciate it. I really do. Um, I I got to tell you, I how do I best describe how I found Bottle Cap Mountain? Like it was in the initial like I started getting on Twitter, listening to music, and you know the playlist you get on and you share your music and. Um, I can't remember who made the playlist. I, it might have been um, our buddy Andy and Bubble Made Imagination. Um, but it got to your sign. That's kind of like a lot of it was, and uh, you know, stuff that was maybe a little bit out of my realm. But then those first notes of Disneyland came on, and I was like, "Oh my God, who is this band?" And I, I like tweeted at you guys immediately like you guys are awesome like i want to be your best friends and that started a beautiful friendship yes sir well i <laughs> i appreciate it man yeah it's um the twitter verse you know yeah who knew really right exactly and then <laughs> we started chatting and i think it started when i was going to the chicago music exchange and i was like hey man you want me to facetime you and yeah like, yeah and then i started sending you pictures and that that started it. Yeah, that's right. No, I just thought it was appropriate to actually exchange numbers and all of that. Cause you know, you can talk on Twitter and that's fun, but it feels more personal now, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I, I, I want Jeff to be able to ask some questions, but um, before that happens, I just wanted to play some music that. first. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? Why don't Come you play on. a song? You want to? Are you cool? Start yeah. with a song, and then we'll we'll get into. Some sure. Questions. Yeah, I can do that. Um, right, cool. I figure I'll play this one for you. So, <laughs> thank you. This is Disneyland. Yeah. I've been wandering around in a cloud of smoke From a gun that this country holds Lately it feels like the whole thing's broke But we'll have to see, I suppose And you get so tired And you feel so wretched And hope's just another silly four-letter word And you wish it was a dream Oh, but it's Disneyland. Well, I was watching Science Fi TV. It was the creature from the Orange Lagoon. 
And all of a sudden I began to see It was just the commander of doom And you get so tired And you feel so wretched And hope's just another silly four-letter word And you wish it was a dream Oh, but it's Disneyland You know, I woke up the other day and I watched the sunrise. I thought to myself that everything was going to be okay. And for a moment, I could listen and I could breathe and I could feel that everything was going to be okay. You know, we get so hung up on the doom and the gloom, but down here in Disneyland, there's nowhere to go but up. And I'm going up. I was walking down a dead end street when I stopped to look at the stars. It's great to keep an eye out and to watch your feet, but the wound comes before the scars. And I know you're tired, and you feel so wretched. And hope's just another silly four letter word, but you wish it was a dream. Oh, it's Disneyland. Down in Disneyland. Down in Disneyland. Hot damn, my friend. Something like that. That, that was, okay. Hot, is that GC or GDC? Oh, yeah, and the bridge, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, that is a good song. Thank you. How did you, how, tell me the story behind that one. How'd you come up with that one? Dude, that had more lyrics in it freaking killed than like 10 songs put together <laughs> so i was seriously uh, thank you the um, come before the scars that had me right there and yeah you're always looking up in disneyland jesus christ dude oh uh, well you freaking put six songs in like one song dude <laughs> yeah can't wait yeah, to I buy your to... albums um stewart yeah um if i if i could can i ask questions matt you're in charge yeah go ahead go ahead all right. Um, so um, you guys posted that link um, with your website. So I checked out those songs and I got a real, I got a b real big star vibe. Um, do you, do you cool. think I'm off base with that? No. Or what? Because I mean, no, not at all. Songs. And by the way, Matt, you have great production too. I don't know how you guys do it. I have no, I have <laughs> money. <laughs> <clears throat> Go ahead, please. Yeah, no, big star, uh, big star for sure. Sorry, Actually, I gotta the, talk to like six people at once. The the first incarnation of Bottle Cap Mountain, we actually used to cover uh, the Ballad of El Goodo, so that was uh, which was always a lot of fun. But yeah, big star is huge for me. That's Love a it. that's a killer compliment. So um, yeah, no, that that no, just it's, that answer uh, that question. Uh, that song was just one um, of those weird uh i was it was in the morning with a cup of coffee and the door open and the dog kind of walking in and out and i don't know the current political you know stuff that was happening at the time and um i uh, it sort of started off you know obviously it's kind of neil youngy i guess you know that progression and then 
So it was sort of mixing that with like, I don't know, a Tom Petty, the spoken thing was definitely influenced by like, here comes my girl or something like that by, by Tom Petty. Yeah. And just trying to be positive in a, in a sort of unpositive world at, you know, at the moment. And yeah, it was the last song written for that record. And then it became the, you know, well, it was actually the title. The we had the title for the record, but no, no title track. And you had to write the song. So I had to write it. And that's how that, so, how that happened. Well, okay. so, did you so have the first the, song uh, I heard? Oh, what? sorry. I was going to ask. So you had, I know you had the title of the album. Did you kind of come up with the music and go that, did you like try to sit down and write Disney land or did you come up with the music? And it was like, this is Disney land. It was more of that, more of the, like the progression came and, and then it, you know, the words just kind of started forming and, and it was, I don't know, just one of those sort of, um, I don't know, meant to be as ridiculous as that sounds, but you know, yeah. kind of meant to be things and the the title actually was the bass player and it was that sort of a play um on dismal land um but uh anyway yeah so that that came from that and then um that's all i really remember anyway there was a lot of drinking <laughs> at the time <laughs> i wouldn't know anything about that <laughs> Did we mention this is brought to you by Old Forester Bourbon? Old oh, Forester Bourbon yes. and, and, and all of our music community on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Stuart, uh, so the first song I heard, and you saw me joke on Twitter, was uh, Metamorphosis from Disneyland. Yeah. And, um, and uh, the machine, not just the doctor, but the machine gave me a good blood pressure test. So <laughs> your music is good for my health. Okay? Well, I'm glad um, to hear that. And then um, Pull the Pole. Jesus Christ, what a great heavy beginning that song has. Oh, okay? cool. Thanks. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry I didn't get to research your music as much as Matt's, but I've been bugging him longer than you. So yeah, yeah. Get, get used to me bugging you. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, but um, from villains to um, 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 to um, leave you for dead, I just. I just felt the big star vibe and, and I absolutely loved it. Well, so, good. I'm, that's great. I've, that means a lot, man. That's really, that's a cool compliment. So, so I'm going to give you a couple questions. Okay. All right. So where did the name bottle cap mountain? First of all, you're from Austin, Texas, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So where did the name bottle cap mountain come from? Okay, so Bottle Cap Mountain actually comes from. So my my dad's a drummer. My dad's a professional. He was you know played my whole life, and he was all you know gone every weekend kind of thing. And um, but uh, he was in a band in 1969 called the Bottle Cap Mountain Boys, and they had a gig opening up for Steppenwolf in Corpus Christi, Texas. And the Holy night before wow. the night before the gig, uh, the leader of the band who had become born again um, Christian uh, fired my dad and the bass player the night before they opened up for Steppenwolf. And so my dad and the bass player went and went and saw the band, went and saw Steppenwolf and the the leader of the band they were fired from, the Bottle Cap Mountain Boys. He started the show with like a sermon and this whole, you know, to a bunch of hippies who, you know, weren't weren't into it. Uh, and then, of course, shortly after that, that band broke up and it was just always a name that I, I thought I always I thought it's kind of sounded mysterious, like the band or something, you know, but yeah. um Anyway, so that for me, yeah, I just dropped the boys and um, yeah, I don't know. Bottle Cap Mountain to me, it's like a yeah. place, you know, it's like a state of mind or something, you know, not and you a... took it back. You took it back from the guy who kicked your dad. It's out. almost like that's right. Art, you know, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, I hope, you know, that. Um, so, but uh, yeah, so I, not to brag, not to brag, but I think I'm asking good. Oh, I think he froze. He All right, froze. I'm gonna try again. I think I'm asking good questions. I got Matt to talk about his grandmother. I got you to talk about your father. That's um, right. So that's great. And then Matt explained how you guys met. So I don't have to ask that. And uh, 
I think we're following me, but I really I think we're you guys are great. So, Stuart, all right, I got yes. a whole collection. I got it. In a, I put it in a uh, jewel case. I got it up on the mantle. My kids pray to it. All right. <laughs> What's the first copper top? Damn it. What's the first album I should buy? The first album by by us? Bottle Gap Mountain, yes. Uh, well, so I mean, the newest one is Just Disneyland. Say Just say all. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know my <laughs> obviously you should buy all of them. Uh, my favorite is Claws Sharp, um, so far. Um, but uh, yeah, the newest one is Disneyland, um, which has Metamorphosis and obviously Disneyland on it. Um. The songs you mentioned, they're all on different records. Villains is on Claws Sharp. Uh, Pull the Pull is on Better Luck. So, <laughs> And they're all kind of different bands, honestly. Me and the bass player, um, Chris Stangland, um, have been doing it since the beginning, basically. And then uh, Yvonne Love, the keyboard uh, player and backup vocalist and whatnot, has been in the band, uh, well, I don't, I don't know, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. I don't know, however long it's been. I knew I said her um, said her name wrong. Yeah. So how long have you guys how old been I together? <laughs> Would you, you guys well, it's Yvonne, it's it's Yvonne Love, but we call her Yvonne. So oh, okay. That, you, know, gotcha. but you got it right. Yeah. Um, you guys have a ton of like records and songs out. How long have you guys been together? So the band has been, uh, I guess, since like 2014. But wow. uh, and then me and the bass player. Basically, since then, he's on the first record. And then Yvonne came along after that. I actually um, met my wife and Yvonne the same night. The bass yeah. player and I and another friend were hanging out at this bar. And we met them the same night. And basically, I don't. since that night, I don't think I've hardly ever spent a night alone without my wife. So it was pretty much like from that, you know, from that night on, we've been pretty much inseparable. And Yvonne kind of came, you know, with that. And then you, you know, you learn, oh, I'm, you know, she's, she's a musician. She, she went to school and, you know, musical theory. She was an opera singer and, you know, and all these amazing things. And um, so anyway, when I told my wife that I was a musician, she laughed at me. That was the first, um, one of the first things that was said, but um, I think she's okay with it now, yeah. you know. <laughs> I think we lost Jeffrey. But, I think um, so. Uh, that's okay. We'll 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 carry on. Um, so Yvonne, um, she's got a great part in um, King of Almost. Yes, she does. I love that part. The little like bridge. Uh, in the oh movie. yeah, yeah that's great. the the Farfisa organ part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is. And somebody else had asked me this too, is that you guys are in Austin. There's tons of music in Austin, first of all. Um, and you guys are a great band. How, what's the music scene like there? Is it, is it like super, like you can always play because there's always places to play or is it really competitive because everybody's in a band? What's the, what's it like? It's a little, it's a little bit of all of those things. Like, I mean, it is super competitive. I mean, there are probably, you know, eight million bands or so something like that. I don't know, you know, it's an exaggeration, yeah. but it feels like it. And there are every other, you know, establishment is a, is a venue or ha, you know, has music. Um, there are a lot of great, you know, like, like any city like that, there's a lot of great about that. And there's, you know, a lot of not so great about that. Yeah. Um, it's definitely competitive. We, end up playing you know places sort of outside of austin you know as far as breweries and things like that you know because those those tend to pay really well uh, yeah. and whatnot yeah. but you know when when you want to when you want to rock out and, and whatnot you know there are a ton of great places in town to play but you know it's like you're playing with four other bands or you know 45 minute set kind of thing yeah. which is a blast but you know you're lucky if you make, you know, if you make, <laughs> you know, anyway. 20 bucks each or whatever. Yeah. But. That's, it's so funny you say that because that's exactly what it's like in Chicago. And 
it's it's funny because Chicago, like, it's, there's a lot of a lot of like metal and new metal bands. So like, the people you're kind of in the same genre with, you kind of stick together. But it's a lot of the same thing. Like, I remember playing in the city, and it's like you, most of the gigs you had to. It was hard to get started because everybody's like, "What's your draw?" It's like, I don't. What's your draw? Like, I'm playing music. <laughs> Why should I come mm -hmm. to your venue and play music? And <laughs> it was a lot of, all right, like we're gonna give you fifty tickets and you gotta sell them to play. And we we played at the Metro, um, and this is kind of like the last time we had done this. But we played, we played, um, and it was like twenty bucks a ticket. And I I pulled every chip I had available to get people to come, and we ended up selling like a hundred and twenty something tickets. And I remember they cut the check for. Three hundred dollars, and I did the math in my head about like everybody had at least two drinks. It was twenty dollars a ticket. It's like this isn't working. But then you go to the suburbs and play at the breweries, and they're like, "But there's going to be people here because they are here all the time, and we're going to yeah. pay you." And it's like, "What? This right. is crazy. yeah, yeah." Shout out to Dry City Brew Works in Wheaton, Illinois, who is my home base. <laughs> nice. Um. Uh, so yeah, like, um, Jeffrey brought up like big star as one of your influences. What else would you say is like a key influence to your guys' music? Um, I know you post like pretty heavily about PJ Harvey. So I know that's one for sure. Yeah. P well, PJ, yeah, for sure. PJ for me, I guess is probably a, a bit of a newer, I kind of discovered her a little later. Um, I mean, my wife's a big fan and, uh, and whatnot, but, um, yeah, it was this last summer, I guess, was a lot of that around. But uh, I mean, as far as me, I mean, above all, it's it's the Beatles, but um, I'm a Beatle nut. Um, yeah. But I mean, you can see Prince behind me there. And I don't know if you can see oh, Wilco yeah. back there. You know, those are big. Um, lots of lots of, you know, lots of stuff. I'm a, you know, huge replacements fan, obviously, as you know, Um yeah, Tom Petty, Bruce Springsteen, you know, Bob Dylan, all the the great American songwriters. But I'm also an Elvis Costello mm -hmm. and the Attractions nut, like especially the the early stuff, you know. But uh, Joni Mitchell, I mean, there's a you know there's a lot a lot of and of course all the soul stuff and you know Otis Redding and all that. But yeah, <clears throat> there's a pretty massive record collection behind me. That. Um, um, I'm wanting to well. go filter through all of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, that's, I, that comes through your music. Like you, you captured all that. Like that's, you, you do a really good job of that through your, like everything you're mentioned. It's like, yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, well, I'm glad that's good to yeah, hear. <laughs> you're, you're it. Um, uh, real quick for everybody who's watching, if you do have questions, pop them in the chat, uh, and we'll talk about them. Um, I, I want to get talking about gear, but before we do that, tell us about what's next for bottle cap. Now. Like, what do you guys got coming, coming out? So now? right now we're working on, uh, our fifth record we've got about eight, I guess, eight songs in the can. We're doing it completely to tape. We bought a couple reels of tape, two inch tape. Um, we haven't touched pro tools. We haven't touched wow. a computer yet. Um, and hopefully we, we won't have to, that's the plan anyway, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, so far, man, it's going really, really good. I'm really happy. Um, and it's really, so far, it's just been three of us. Um, I've been, I've played all the drums so far. Um, and yeah, me, Chris Stanglin, the bass player and Yvonne Love playing keys and, so uh, this weekend we're gonna be in the studio all weekend, Friday through Sunday. Um, we got a good friend uh, drummer from here named Ben Humphreys, and another great friend drummer named Ray Flint, who was a member of Bottle Cap Mountain for a long time. Ben's been playing with us um, for a while, and it's kind of a revolving, you know, sort of thing between the two of them. My dad actually ended up playing on one of the songs. So, so far, yeah, really, that's that's the focus is this record. We should have a, a seven inch out, um, hopefully by the end of the year. And then the full record will be probably uh, 
beginning of next year, I hope. Um, but it'll be a non album, seven inch old school. Um, the only way you'll be able to get it is if you buy the 45 or I guess if you ask me nicely and I can send it to you, but, um, <laughs> and, and you guys, you guys do it. You're all, you do it all yourself, right? Distribution and everything. Yeah. Cause I don't know. We don't know any better or any other way yeah. to, to do <laughs> that's Awesome. I mean, it's it's hard to get, especially me. It's like Matt Durr in the high watt, so it's all on me to, you know, kind of put everything out there. Which I mean, ha is great because yeah, I play with a revolving door of musicians, but also at the same time, like, makes it hard to get. You know, it's a lot. It costs a lot to make seven inches. Oh man, yeah. Oh, I know. Believe me. Oh, so Joe Murphy. Uh, hey, Joe. Um, yeah, no, definitely plan to do that. Um, actually, I'd love the plan really, I think, is to get at the very least to do a little tour and go up to Illinois and play some shows with Matt and hopefully Phil Yates, too. Yeah. Um, that that ultimately that's the plan. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, after all this crap is over. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to come down to Champagne and have a bill with us, Bottle Cap Mountain, and High on Stress. I think that would be uh, yeah. Great. And specifically, we'd call it the Joe Murphy Show. So, <laughs> um, I don't know what uh what um song you had planned play next, but uh, if you want to play like one of your new ones off the upcoming record, or if you want to whatever you want to play, man, let's let's do another song and then we'll come back and we'll talk gear. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can do a new one. Uh, this one was uh, written by me and the bass player. He wrote the lyrics. Uh, I wrote the music. Well, I, I made it a song, um, I guess. Anyway, it's called Tin Can Belief. It goes like this. Now red, my motor's still, my motor's still a little light. What's that you said? My motor's still, my motor's still. Hey, hello, can you hear me? A thousand miles up and nobody near me. Hey, you. Oh, when this old world goes cold. Well, I will still be rolling When you, my girl, grow old Loverly as I ever was They're asleep all over America they're asleep all over the world. Hello, hello. Little light, red now dark, and my breath is still. My breath is still. Little light, why won't you spark? And my breath is still. My breath is still. Hey, hello, can you hear me? A thousand miles up and away. And nobody near me. Hey, you. Oh, when this old world goes cold, well, I will still be rolling. When you, my girl, grow old, loverly as I ever was, the sad old world goes cold. And I will still be rolling when you, my girl, grow old. Loverly as I ever was, and I was. Hey, you. That's it. That was That's awesome, short. man. That was great. Another great song. Thank you. You're too kind. You're no, too kind. I'm, I'm appropriately kind, I think. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, yeah, so uh, um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, let's see if we've got any more questions. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, Harvey. I am rocking the <laughs> suburban dad. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, one of the things... Oh, Harvey, that's right. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I was going to tell you I got a backup guitar, so I might be able to play that request for you at the end. Um, so let's talk gear, because we've, we've been talking gear. And yes. um, you've turned me on to a lot of stuff. And I even, I, I had to, I'll tell a quick story about like uh, how good I got to know Stuart through this whole time is I wanted a Telecaster so bad. And I've accumulated a lot of stuff over the years. Um, and mostly like early on, you buy cheap stuff. Um, and it's just great to have. Uh, so I was like literally taking everything I had amassed since I started playing guitar at 16 and trading it in. And I had to basically yeah. have Stuart talk me through, like, am I going to regret, you know, trading <laughs> the Fender Mustang that plays like crap that I worked, you know, umpteen hours at Steak and Shake? <laughs> and you were like, nope, you will not. If you don't play it, you won't. And you've been right. That. It was right. So, so tell us, like, tell us about your gear. What's your favorite piece? What's your, what's, what do you got? So, I've got a few. Um, yeah, the Telecaster, I think, was the that was definitely a good choice. Um, and yeah. nothing against, you know, no, no diss to the Mustang. You know, the Mustang is a is a great guitar. Um, I've got a Telecaster. It's a, it's a, actually, it's a late. 80s mid 86 maybe no 88 it's an 88 japanese telecaster with a maple fretboard and maple neck and all of that that this guitar player friend of my dad's actually a really great guitar player um named spencer jarman it was his guitar and he painted it with this um it's not acrylic paint but it's you know some i don't know i think he was high on acid or something and <laughs> painted this guitar and when i first got it it had chicken bones glued to it and all, all sorts of crazy crap and I, I took a lot a lot of that off and as much as the when i first really uh started playing and i i out and i had that guitar and it had all this you know rough paint on it and i was in essentially a punk band jumping around a lot and all of that and would just rip up you know, my forearm. So I finally scraped all of that off and now it just kind of looks like it's part of the finish. Um, but that's a great, I love it. I would, you know, I'd never get rid of it. I've got a, a Fender Strat, nothing special, but uh, I've got a Rickenbacker um, 12 string. It's uh, just like the one George Harrison, like the, you know, the, the Hard Day's Night guitar. Um, I've I got an SG standard uh, back in January. Uh, which I absolutely love. I think Gibson is doing some right things again. Yeah. Um, I've got a Gretsch Silver Falcon, um, which is also a great guitar. Um, what else do I have? I've got this. So this is my acoustic, which is uh, Gibson Advanced Jumbo. Um, I so want it's one of those. It yeah, good. it's it's a good one if you notice. So it's got like the old school. Gibson yeah. before they changed it in the 40s. So this is this is supposed to be, I think, like a 36 or so, like exact replica, I guess. Of wow. um, it's basically a J45, really. I yeah. would say. Um, but My yeah, gear. Gibsons are the the 30 era Gibsons from the, the oh, 30, yeah. 1930s. Yeah, there was one. Uh, they had one. It was an arch top at Chicago Music Exchange the other day, and I almost just was like, I'm just going to get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, man. I don't know. I I figure I've got, realistically, I think I have, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I, I keep saying five. Five more, you know, yeah. five more guitars that, that I think I have to get. Uh, and then, at, you know, after that, it's probably ridiculous and my wife will kill me um <laughs> but yeah i i bought a lot of gear over the last you know year and a half and i i had a my main amp was a vox ac15 you know nothing special about it you know just a you know good vox and 
Uh, but I recently got a little Fender Pro Junior, um, the the newest one, the Pro Junior Four or whatever it is, which is like you know I don't know. Jeff Beck uses them, and I figure, hey, you know, if they're good enough for Jeff Beck, then they're they're good enough for my crappy guitar playing, you know. So right. um, I um I, I played through that Blues Junior, and I was having some problems with it, but um, I put some tongue saw uh, tubes in there. Mm -hmm. and it's i'm like i'm customizing it to pieces and it's starting to like get there yeah um, and i was like you know what i'm gonna like i'm just gonna instead of getting a new amp i'm gonna get this one sounding hot and then i saw the advertisement for those new tone master oh yeah amps. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh what is it the attenuator or a, what's it called in the back i that's a word you can't say without sounding drunk Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was like, oh no, I might need to get that, but we'll see. I, I'll stick well, with the blues junior. The blues junior, hey, it's sounding good. The live, uh, the your, you know, the newest live video, whatever. I mean, it, you're using that. I mean, you're using it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds great. That was uh, that's funny because it's like the first song. It's like it's that was, and that was I was tweaking it after that. So. <laughs> but uh yeah well was, it sounds it sounds killer and i and of course that's the um the jhs um double barrel uh, yeah double barrel yeah. yeah which also sounds amazing I, I think i might get a muffaletta is what i've got my eyes set on right now because i want some major fuzz action I so. highly recommend it. I highly recommend the fuzz. And the muffaletta is the one where you can change between the different. Yeah. yeah. Like you can't get that kind of stuff. It's like you can have so many choices. I love that. That's why I love the double barrels. It's right. Like everything. Um, but yeah, that that's the for anybody who's like watched the video, that's the fuzz and the um, the drive that you're hearing is all driven from the. Um, that's killer. Yeah. Um, and that uh, your um, SG's new, I yeah. I, would, I thought for sure that was vintage. It looks killer. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like a just like a sixty one. Um, but I mean the the ones from like sixty one to sixty four or whatever. I mean they all, you know, I guess kind of have that with the maestro vibrola, you know, the the Wang bar and all of that, and yeah. it's just like the one George Harrison had and played and like on you know revolver and that stuff which is what i'm that's for me like that's the anything he had yeah. <laughs> basically um no yeah it's a new one man it's it's a and it's a great guitar they they put out i guess the three different versions you know the the one with that tailpiece and then with the weird sideways tailpiece and then just like the sg jr with the one p90 which are those are those reissues are supposed to be really good too um and then the new les paul jr reissues are supposed to be really good um yeah. so and just instead of which is actually funny real quick because i forever i thought gibson was just making a bunch of crap that nobody wanted you know like actual musicians you know you're you're charging seven grand you know for the Kiefer sutherland signature whatever you know <laughs> like nobody wants that i mean no you know no diss to Kiefer, but you know That's seven hilarious. grand for yeah. you know i don't know but good enough for Kiefer. He, <laughs> hey man I just i'm imagine. sure it's a cool guitar <laughs> when you posted that i was just picturing like they meant they were like meant to say Keith Richards, like Keith. And oh, they, right. They went, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Kiefer Sutherland, man. <laughs> Apparently, it's an ES-336, so I don't know. I mean, I think it, it's just a 335 with some kind of mod, you know, that yeah. he wanted, and I don't know. I mean, Kiefer Sutherland is definitely known as a guitar player, for sure, and nothing True. Else. Very true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, we're getting we're getting close to an hour. You got one more song in you? Sure. All right, I'll do. Uh, you do one more song. I'll bring Jeff back on to say some good night, and then I'll do Harvey. I will do your request to close us out. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna actually do. Uh, I'll do this one. This goes out to Yvonne Love. This is called Sunrise. You 
Come and drop this bomb on me when I am in such a state. And I can't remember what day that it is or all the things that I ate. About myself and all the things right with all the things wrong. And all this damn night, I can't seem to shake this fear and this sweat. It poisons my brow as I sit here and fret about my life and its future but the sunrise never comes strip up naked cold shower wake me up when i'm a flower once again won't you speak up my head is loud and you my dear whispering and all the little voices, they sound like rain bombing the roof, showering pain. And still I can't shake this fear and this sweat that poisons my brow as I sit here and fret about my life and its future. But the sunrise never comes. my life and its future but the sunrise never comes the sunrise never comes the sunrise never comes oh, All right, Stuart, thank hey. you so much. Another great one. Thank you. Um, all right, thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. This is a yes. great first episode of um, Dirtafest. We yes, hope sir. to do more. Hope to have you oh. both back soon. Um, just a shout out to some of the people who I think we're gonna have on in the future. Uh, Elephants and Stars, um, I've already talked to them a little bit. Uh, I'm sure we'll have on, uh, I already talked a little bit to um, Trailer Hawk. Uh, I will definitely have to have on Bubble Made Imagination. Um, yes. Uh, the Negatrons, Eric Linden. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. So expect if you're on. And I hope also too, like some of the non-musicians, Harvey, Tim, Joe, Steve, Becky, uh all of you guys like hope to have you uh on as uh guests like we had jeff so people can get to know you too so hit me up if you guys want to do that um and uh i'll start setting some schedules but um if i just can just say thanks to to becky tim and harvey i appreciate it thank you glad yeah, you liked great. it the great and, um, of the, i uh, just like to thank you all for letting me come on and ask you questions um <laughs> yeah. Stuart. I think you killed it, Matt. You need to play more. I I, I need more. I need more cowbell. I, got a new, I, got a I need more cowbell, I baby. Guitar. I know. I'm Don't right break now. the string on the first song. That's the first rule of rock and roll. But anyway, <laughs> no. uh, you guys are the best, and thanks for letting me hang out with All you. Right. And um, thank you guys. Rock and roll. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna play a song. Thank you. Do it. Uh, thank you, everybody. All right. Here we go, Harvey. I just reset up my microphone. I don't know how this is going to sound, but this is for you, buddy. For everybody out there, um, Moonshine, my new single, our new single comes out Friday uh, on all streaming platforms. So um, uh, please listen to that. Uh, Bandcamp Friday is also this Friday, so check that out. And um, like and subscribe and share this. Let's get some traction so we can do it live. And I haven't practiced this, so let's see how it goes. But Harvey, this is for you, my friend. Mm 
long way down long ago It's a living hell what I've been told Can't cheat your way through the past Now I'm counting down days before it's the last She wakes up the kids for Sunday school I'll stay at home, she says I'm a fool Turn on the TV to a baseball game I never know the score, the player's name If I'd left you long ago Maybe I'd still be Drive to work every day Staring at the sign of the South Highway I get home well after nine She never asks where when or If anyone asks, we're doing all right. We're in a separate bed, sleep at night. If I'd left you long ago, maybe I'd still be. You'd be safe down at your home If I'd left you long ago Maybe eighteen was too early Maybe eighteen was too soon Kids are grown up. Stare across the table, coffee cup. She can't drive herself to the grocery store. Can't leave her here, but I want more. Cause she can't cheat you away. Now I'm counting down days before it's the last All right, thank you everybody. Thank you Harvey. Appreciate it. Hopefully that was good without any practice, but uh Thank you, guys. Thank you once again, Stuart, Jeffrey. Guys, have a good night. <laughs>